here in the vet school we have a really amazing number of naturally occurring diseases that are often studied in the med center. UC Davis School of Veterinary Medicine ranks number one in the world, treating more than 50,000 patients each year for everything from minor illness to life-threatening conditions. It's a particularly exciting time, I think, in veterinary medicine and hopefully in human medicine as well. Some of the things that make our species different also makes them special for the potential for translation. The UC Davis Veterinary Hospital offers many of the same specialties as UC Davis Health. Patients receive cutting-edge care from board-certified faculty, residents, and clinical staff. Many of the disease processes are very similar. Um, our training is very similar in terms of our diagnostic capabilities, surgical training. As a matter of fact, our veterinary ophthalmology residents and the physician ophthalmology residents go through um, some of their training together. So I think there are probably as many commonalities as there are differences. With a One Health approach, many veterinary medicine faculty already collaborate with physicians, geneticists, and other human health professionals on veterinary clinical trials. Trials that could result in major breakthroughs for animals and for people. One example underway right now uses the dog as a model for human disease. In looking at uh, immunotherapies, particularly in combined with traditional forms of chemotherapy or radiation therapy, um, the dog model uh, offers a little bit more reliable method than mouse when you're um, looking at the immune system. Some conditions, such as hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, are common in both cats and humans, but HCM affects one in seven cats compared to one in 500 people. We're very fortunate that cats actually make a really nice model for the human condition, and as we make strides to help cats with this condition, that same progress in research can be really helpful to human physicians as they look for ways to treat this disease. Also, animals live shorter lives, allowing researchers to gather data on a disease process over a period of months. The same process may occur over years in a human's life. We can take a patient from the time of diagnosis, follow them through treatment, all the way out to whatever the outcome is, and get a better feel for how that tumor reacts in that environment. When it comes to novel pharmaceuticals and therapies, veterinary clinical trials can potentially accelerate human clinical trials and reduce research and development costs. I think we have the opportunity to really better inform um, the drug development process, particularly when we're talking about biomarkers. Can we identify and validate biomarkers that may be a better indicator of whether this drug is going to work in people? The majority of drugs that enter human clinical trials fail to pass through phase three and get approval by the FDA. What if we could make it 20% better? The average cost of a drug to market from start to finish currently is over a billion dollars. What if you could improve that by 20%, even 15%? Ophthalmologist Dr. Chris Murphy has a dual appointment in the UC Davis Schools of Medicine and Veterinary Medicine. He believes doctors on both sides of the causeway have an opportunity to learn from each other, collaborating on veterinary and human clinical studies. Well, I think it comes back down to that we're more alike than different. On both campuses, clinicians seek the best care for their patients and strive to develop diagnostic therapeutics and devices to treat complex diseases. We've already seen what can happen when great minds come together, advancing human and animal health and positioning UC Davis as a world-leading allied health system. We're always interested in learning more and figuring out how we can collaborate because um, at the end of the day, not only can we help forward the physician's driven research, but often those results can be applied to our patients and maybe change how we do things here. Having both MD cardiologists and veterinarians and geneticists all work together to tackle the same problem has led to really amazing innovation and research in a very short period of time. I can see that there's a common interest to pursue some of these more advanced things and try to improve quality of life, improve outcomes that we're getting with all of our patients. So keeping those lines of communication open and trying to really develop those relationships is really essential.